Hello, everyone. I am joined today by Professor Brock from Eastern Michigan University College of Business, who is here to speak with us on their new Master of Science in Tax Consulting program. Professor Brock, why don't you tell our listeners a little bit about yourself, your experiences, and a brief summary of the program before we get started. Sure, Kelsey. Thank you so much. Um, I've practiced uh, in tax for over 15 years prior to entering academia, and this was following uh, both a master's degree in accounting as well as a law degree. Uh, most recently, before I entered academia, I was the uh, leader in the Washington National Tax Office of the Partnership Tax Practice at Grant Thornton. Uh, prior to that, I had been with national and international accounting firms, law firms, um, mostly focused on transactional tax almost exclusively, including partnership tax, international corporate financial products, since entering academia, I've also continued to consult nationally and internationally on tax matters. The program uh, is designed to prepare students uh, to enter the field of, of tax consulting from day one. It was put together with that focus in mind. Thank you. And how long has this program been running? It ran for about seven or eight years uh, prior to this fall, uh, but this fall it will be completely redesigned. Awesome. Can you tell our listeners what differentiates this program from other graduate master's and tax programs out there? Sure. Uh, first would be, uh, as I mentioned earlier, it's designed to prepare graduates to do tax consulting work from the very start of their careers. And some of the uh, items that are the focal point to prepare students for this is an emphasis on ability to read and understand the rules. This would be the Internal Revenue Code, the United States Treasury regulations, case law, administrative items coming out of the IRS. And even beyond that, to once you read a rule, sort of break that rule down into its component parts and then to research the definition of each part of the rule. And only by doing this can you understand whether a rule has or has not been satisfied. Beyond the uh, emphasis on reading and understanding what we call the rules, the tax law, there's a keen emphasis on writing. Uh, students need to be able to communicate about their uh, tax technical rules in a way that's concise, coherent, logical, um, not just to senior leadership, but also to non-tax technical individuals. And as part of this, uh, the last component of sort of preparing students to do tax consulting work is Focusing our students and in, in our, in our program to understand their client's uh, sort of tax strategy, which includes their tolerance for risk, uh, which is crucial in, in giving tax advice, whether you're internal or external. Yeah, and that kind of leads into my next question. How will this program benefit the individual as well as the employers they're working for? When, when firms and employers come to campus to recruit, um, they, we have lunches with them to get to know them, and, and we often ask, always ask, I should say, what skills they wish graduates had more of, not just our graduates, but all graduates coming out of all universities they recruit at. And without question, writing is the number one uh, wish item on their wish list. Um, when you're focused on tax technical understanding rules, re reading the rules, breaking the rules down to their component parts, reading cases, at a very high level, this is critical thinking at its best. And those critical thinking skills will also carry the students into the future no matter what field they go into, even if it's not tax. So I would say the writing skills as well as the critical thinking skills uh, will benefit any employer that our graduates work for. And I know you discussed this a little bit up front, but what motivated you really to create this specific type of graduate program? Sure. Um, as I mentioned, I've practiced for 15 years before entering academia. So I saw personally the skills that were lacking in uh, folks that were coming to work for the firms I was at. In addition, as I mentioned, I interviewed employers after entering academia, and they reiterated those same skills. Uh, and so that was a big motivating factor was to design a program that focused on the skills that were lacking. Uh, secondly, 
a lack of a detailed, deep technical focus and lack of emphasis on oral and written communication from a technical and non-technical perspective, I saw as, as just critical for a master's in tax program. And I wanted to close that gap, if you will. Awesome. And how is the program being offered right now, in person or remote or hybrid? So the, the current year, the classes are, are offered what we call online synchronous, which means students show up at the normal class meeting time via Zoom, and I'm on Zoom, and I teach them as if we were in the room together, although we're not in the room together. Going forward, I think next fall, uh, or maybe even in the spring, but definitely by next fall, we should be in a position to offer what we call a high-flex classroom, where students are, can appear in person in the classroom uh, if they want, or they can dial in remotely and learn, sim and learn remotely and do that. It will all be done simultaneously. Uh, if you will. So students could be um, present one night, not present the next. They could be in and or around the greater Detroit area, or they could be halfway or all the way across the country. It doesn't matter. In addition, um, all of my classes are recorded. So students who have to miss a class or who have work conflicts can go back and watch the lectures later if they miss class. That's awesome. Um, and what are the minimum qualifications to apply for the program? Sure. Very generally, and this is a, a broad generalization, there are a lot of details in this, but very generally they have to have an undergraduate GPA degree from an accredited university. They need to have at least a 3.0 grade point average on a scale of 4.0, and a GMAT score of 500 or a GRE score of 306. That said, the GMAT and GRE exams can be waived if certain conditions are met, and that's where it gets a little complicated. I can supply you with a link to uh, the page on our website that describes all this. That would be great. Um, so in addition to that, where can listeners go to find out more general information on the program? Sure. We have uh, on our website uh, both sort of, if you will, a marketing site that talks about the program. Uh, a couple pages of that, and in, in addition, the catalog itself goes into the details of the requirements of the program, uh, what you needs to have, what you, a student needs to have to get into the program, uh, what the program consists of, et cetera. And I can certainly supply you with those links as well. Great. Yeah, we'll definitely include those. Um, uh, would you suggest listeners reach out to you if they have any additional questions, or um, is there a contact that they can reach out to? They can certainly contact me. Uh, my email address is my first initial N for Noel Brock one at emish.edu. That's n Brock one at emish.edu, and they um, feel free to email me with any questions they may have, and I'll get back to them either by phone or email. Awesome. We'll include that email address with those links as well. Um, Thank you, Noel, for joining us today. Um, if anyone does have any questions, please feel free to reach out to him directly. Um, and all of the links and the brochures will be linked with this recording. Kelsey, thank you for your time, and I appreciate everything. Look forward to uh, speaking with you soon. Yeah, thank you.